dishies. Yep, I'm still here in my kitchen and I let some of these vintage cookbooks and magazines inspire me. But before I post my cooking video, I want to offer a few culinary collections to you. Just leave a comment and check the description box if you're interested in any of these things. There's also a playlist if you want to see anything else that I have for sale. Just be aware that prices do not include shipping and each item will weigh an average of one to two pounds. I think there is one thing that weighs three pounds once it's packaged. So the first thing I have is this wonderful pair of Bisquick cookbooks from 1964 and 1967, which belong to Ms. Alice Reeve. I'm gonna leave her name tag in there because if I was keeping these books, I would wanna keep it there. So these books are chock full of useful information, including these removable pages with the Bisquick basics. I don't yeah. think Alice used these books because other than a little oxidation on the metal mm -hmm. rings from age and storage, they're almost like new. But the second book, the new Bisquick cookbook, there's a little more color in the illustrations and they do describe what's new about the Bisquick. It was actually a formula change affecting the balance of the ingredients such as powdered eggs and baking powder. I just love these illustrations. <laughs> Look how cute. thing I found was this Joys of Jello book. This book I think was originally published in 1962. This one is the ninth edition and it was probably printed sometime in the very late 60s or the early 70s. If you've been watching me a little while you know that I am not a fan of Jello but I am a fan of recipes and I am a fan of color. So you can't deny the appeal of making something like this. So this one is called Multi Stripe Delight. And just look at that photo there. So it tells you how to do that how you have to let each one set. So this was very interesting. This is how to make marzipan using the jello. You would use some coconut and you use the jello to color and flavor the coconut and the grated blanched almonds. So I thought that was really cool. Have you seen that before? Have you ever tried that? And I know you're not happy and I'm not happy unless you are seeing something done a little bit disgusting with Jello. This is ring around the tuna with curly endive and radish roses. Yuck! Num you can see the little flakes of tuna in there and the radishes. <laughs> yep, and no, that does have a little bit of a dent in the corner. It's otherwise in really excellent condition. I don't so six inches, six by eight inches there. Now check out this fabulous Le Creuset cookbook from 1975. It's by Irina Chalmers and illustrated by B. Penny. It is in excellent condition. It's about 48 pages. And what's really cool is it has more than just recipes. It has a whole section on the different cookware that they offer, how to store it and care for it, as well as how to select the correct piece for whatever you're cooking. And of course, there are recipes. I thought you might enjoy this ratatouille recipe, which is actually a very simple 
recipe. So I would like to try that. I don't, I think I've made it one time. And of course it has this handy conversion chart in the back, a necessity for every kitchen. This next slot really fascinated me. It's three 1970s Wilton cake decorating books and catalogs. I thought for a very brief moment of keeping these and then I thought more realistically. Um, I will never make the things in here, but they are so fun to look at. This first one is a 1973 cake decorating instruction book and it teaches you how to do borders, lettering, flowers, and tells you which tips to use to make the border that you want. Um, it's, this would just be so cool to make some of the things in here. Everything is so intricate. Do any of you know how to make things like this? Sugar molds, easy as sand pies. I find that very hard to believe. Have you ever made a sugar mold? I have not, but I have made a sand pie and uh, it's pretty easy. Hansel and Gretel. We used to just go to the grocery store. Well, here you go. Here are your bridge cakes. You can set out your luncheon cloth and make these for your parties. So the next book is called a Wilton Yearbook for cake decorating. This one, as you can see, is from 1978. So this has a little bit of instruction, a little bit of and ideas, and it's also a catalog of the different things that they offered for your cake decorating needs. And it's just really fun to look at. There's those bridge cakes again. That's a cake. Pretty amazing. And here's the third one. This one's from 1979. It has many of the same things as the 1978 one. And just like the yarn books, there are some very groovy photos from 1979. So all three of those will go together for $8 and they'll weigh about three pounds to ship those. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? That circus lion tamers cake. I love that one. I like to study vintage catalogs of all kinds because it really kind of helps me put things in perspective when I'm out looking for vintage items to collect or to sell. All the little details like what the candles look like and what kind of tables they're on and the little things that go on top. Oh look there's some marzipan on top and if you don't like their recipe you can get out your jello book and use that look at all these little plastic animals that go on top of the cakes they're just like the little Hong Kong ones that we find thrifting, right? Look how cute, it's so adorable. The little ducks and the little kitties. I wonder if the Wilton warehouse has, you know, a bin just full of these from a long time ago. Wouldn't that be cool? I really enjoyed this little section on making sugared flowers or you know forming those kinds of flowers look at that pansy it's so detailed and intricate these are the pans I remember remember cakes like that I remember those
Next, I have the, these three, The Cook's Magazines from 1981, 1982, and 1983. I think this magazine is still in production. They're about 80 pages each, and the photography is just incredible. Uh, in my mind, this is a gourmet magazine. These recipes and skills for cooking things in this magazine are way out of my league. Maybe they're not out of your league. So this lemon one is from March, April, 1983, and I just love that cover. Don't you love that? Look, look at that photo there. It, I, really, I really didn't look at the articles. I was so struck by the photography, which I, I just found really wonderful in these magazines. They would be great for collage or decoupage or junk journals. They're just really very, very beautiful. This tomato one is from July, August, 1982. I mean, look at that photo. This was an article about cooking on a submarine. There were some great photos. I tried to zoom in on them so you could see them. Can you imagine? That's the kitchen. Uh. This next one, which has an illustration of cranberries on the front, is from November, December, 1981. Look at that. Pure, cuisine puree. I mean, it's amazing. Then there's, there's instructions for how to do that. So, yeah, I think this magazine is still in production but um, I thought these were a really great find. Next, I have this 1963 Cal Favorite Recipes of California Winemakers book put out by the Wine Advisory Board of San Francisco. It is in like new condition and it's full of recipes which were submitted by vintners of the different wineries in California. There aren't very many illustrations and there's no photographs of the food itself, but there is a wine guide and it's in, like I said, it's in really excellent condition. Well, I have just saved the best for last, don't you know? This is 10 short lessons in home canning put out by Care Glass Company. And this is Vivian R's 1953 Home Ec book on home canning. You can see the holes punched in the side. Look at this graduate. I just love that illustration. And there's Vivian's name. I'm not even going to try to pronounce her last name. S-U-H-S. -S, that's her high school. She's a senior. The page is torn on the front, the front page. There's just like a little chunk out of it, but all the pages are there. And I'm just gonna let you look through this one because it's so fabulous.
thank you all so much for checking it out. I hope you enjoyed seeing this fun retro group of cooking magazines and cookbooks. If you're interested in anything, all the information as well as my email is in the description box. And stay tuned if you want to see my inspired cooking video, which will be coming up next. And don't forget, June 1st is my next giveaway, the June giveaway, coming up June 1st. <laughs> Everyone have a wonderful week, weekend, whenever you're watching this. Just have a lovely day. Ta!